recording good. Um, hopefully it doesn't look like I'm just sitting in the dark right now. Um, <laughs> hold on. Let me get into my position. Ah, oh, shoot. What is the thing I always do? Oh, we always take this and put it right up here. Oh my god, that's way closer than before. Come on. My camera's been having a really tough time focusing. There we go. Well, that looks gross. A little bit of a wipe down there. We go. Hold on. Right here. Wait, how do we? How do we show off the shroud logo there? There we go. Somewhere in there, there is a, uh, a usable thumbnail. But today we're talking about the Shroud Mouse. Shroud Mouse G303X Shroud, or Shroud Edition Mouse. Uh, it was top rated in the poll I did a little bit ago, and it took me one month to get into it. So I got it really quick, and then it took me about a month to get into the whole mouse, because it's just such a weird and unique shape. Don't say that about a lot of mice. Because some mice I pick up and I'm like, I instantly know how to work with this thing. And some mice, like this one, I'm like, whoa, this is weird. So I knew this one was going to take a while to get used to so I could do a real review. Um, and yeah, here I am like uh, over a month later. Because uh, I really had to give myself a lot of time to figure out how I felt about this. Um, general overview of the mouse. This is the 303 shape. Uh, it's a wireless 303. Uh, it's kind of heavy at 75 grams, but I I don't know. Um, I think it's doable, but it's on the top end of doable, I guess. Now I've found out that se about 70 grams is the highest I want to go. Uh, price is 130 new, but I've found this for 40 bucks on eBay, and I'm get I have some theories on why that is. Uh, it's because it's a weird mouse shape. Um, and I think a lot of people bought it for the like uh, the hype of the shroud name and then that they uh, sold it, that they got rid of it. So you can get them new, uh, basically new, because people, I think, use it for a little bit. Then they're like, this isn't for me. It's an expensive product. And they sell it on eBay and the going rate is about 40 bucks. So if you can get one, do that. Mine came with the box and all the accessories for 40 bucks. So uh, as far as that, if you have the extra money, it's worth trying out. But it's definitely not for most people because let's talk about the shape. So it's that 303 shape. Oh, I have a new overhead cam. Look at this. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay. So talking about the shape here, we see that the mouse, when compared to something like my Starlight, I don't have my G Pro X. That's at work, actually. But my Starlight, you can see that this mouse has a really wide midsection really narrow in the front buttons and really narrow back end compared to the more symmetrical um, and just straight shape of most other mice on the market here. And maybe we get something like this with a little bit of a bulge in the middle, but this is a far cry. And it feels even weirder when you get around to these edges that are caved upwards. So you have almost a sharp edge. Now this doesn't this is definitely rounded out, but it feels sharp to hold. It feels very forced. And I had to change my grip style completely. And I don't think there's a lot of people who naturally grip their mice in this way. So when I grip my mouse, I come on the top like this. I put my hand over here and I lock my back pinky and my 
right, what is this, my ring finger? Yeah, uh, my right ring finger right up here on the mouse to kind of give me a pivot point between here and then my pinky locks that in and then my fingers just rest on top. My pointer and my other one, oh my gosh. Um, so when we're talking about the shroud mouse and you try to do that, try to put my finger here, thumb goes in the spot, that's fine. Ring finger goes in the spot, that's fine. Pointer fingers and uh, middle finger go right there, it's fine. And then this pinky finger has nowhere to go. It's a similar kind of conundrum that I was having on the Death Hatter V3 Pro. When I reviewed that mouse, that mouse, if you remember, had a big back hump here and that was really hard on my hands. So talking about grip styles, I think this mouse only works if you're gonna grip it how Shroud does it. And how Shroud does it is not that far off from how I do it, but it's even more aggressive. When I say aggressive, he gets further up on this mouse and puts all of his fingers forward of these bumps on the side so that he can get up on here and get crazy amount of control. So instead of putting my fingers where I feel natural, go all the way down to those tapered edges and grab from right here. And this is how he locks it in. Now, I've heard some people say online and my thoughts on this kind of grip style, and I know I'm going a lot into the grip here of the mouse. And that's because this is like the most important part. This is the deciding factor on whether or not this mouse will work for you. Um, okay, so he takes, instead of having a ring finger and thumb oriented grip that holds the mouse like this, he comes up like this and does like a pinky, like a three handed grip here that locks everything in up here in front of it rather than a stabilizer this is a full part of the grip and that gives him the that axis of control that lock in um well also not needing to worry about uh his pointer finger and his uh his middle finger like i do so it's a very similar grip but you really have to come up and get aggressive on that mouse and that's why the buttons taper in the way that they do uh, and, and this is not something that was came naturally to me, but after a while of playing with it, I understand why someone would do it. It feels like you're incredibly in control of the mouse. Definitely someone who's playing on softer pads than this one, not harder pads, not pads with such speed. And at the sense he's playing or in even higher senses, I feel like you got to be incredibly in control, but it's a very small percentage of people that this feels natural to, especially because, or a very small percentage of people who this will feel natural to. Yeah, I said that right. Okay. Um, especially because the back has these long tapered edges that go all the way back into your palm. And since you're so aggressive on the mouse, even with big hands like mine, it feels like those edges just dig into different spots in your palm well, and to some, it may give a locked in feeling after just a small while of gaming in this position, it feels like these bumps are just in the way more than supporting anything. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, sit, <laughs> this is a weird analogy, but it's kind of like when you sit on uh, something that's not supposed to be a chair, but you really just want to sit down and you're just like, oh yeah. That's good. That's comfortable. It's kind of like when you sit on a crappy chair like this, where you're like, oh yeah, I get it. These, uh, these pads are good for my back. They, they keep everything in, they keep everything together and it really supports me. But then you realize you're, you're not supposed to do that. That's bad. That feels bad when you're, when you're pushed in different directions, you want to find something that feels natural. So it feels comfortable after a long while, not uncomfortable like this chair. So I think this chair is a good analogy for how this mouse feels. Um, and that's what it comes down to for me. I'm just not gonna, I'm never gonna be as comfortable. It took me, I took a month or a month and a half or however long I've had this mouse. And I've played with it pretty consistently. But every time I pick up another mouse that isn't this mouse, I'm like, gosh, I can feel, I, I just feel the skill, like the ceiling of my play and my aim just rises and I can't get anywhere close to there uh, with this mouse. And it's not the way, it's purely the shape. Uh, let's go back to the notes here because I feel like we're getting way around there and I've talked a lot about grip, but... Now we got to talk about, holy shit, I talked for nine minutes about grip. Maybe this is going to be the long, 
the long format video, the extended grip talk video. Uh, uh, and maybe I'll just upload this fully unedited to the second channel, Brad Slice 2. Um, so if you're watching it, that's where it is. Um, in the box, the USB cable is really nice. It's rubber, it's not braided, but it's USB-C and no more of that weird three-pronged micro USB bullshit. Uh, there's as, box is nice as always. Uh, it comes with a little USB extender to get this thing up on your desk. And a uh, little, little instruction manual and a little Logitech blue sticker for someone who wants more stickers. Um, and then Logitech G Hub software is fine as always. I mean, the Steel Series software also didn't crash my computer, but it was a lot more confusing. Logitech G Hub is much more straightforward and less BS. Um, this mouse has some extra features on it. It has a DPI button, and I can't believe that's an extra feature nowadays, but it almost feels like having the DPI button here is going out of style. Um, it has a nice tight tension on the scroll wheel with good tactile like bumps. Like, listen to this. Yeah, just good tactile bumps and good tactile side button clicks. Good stuff there. Uh, some people have talked about this being in the wrong spot for them. They can't really get their grip right on it. And uh, yeah, overall, the shape is just weird. I, I know I want to just talk about the shape forever, but uh, it's true that uh, that's the biggest thing in the way of this mouse. Everything else is top quality and fine. The weight's high. The price is kind of high for, I mean, f such a niche product. But then again, you have stuff like the HSK Plus coming out at $179. And just... You don't really, nah, I don't really think people, most people are going to be able to use that mouse. So it's definitely not a mouse for everyone. Kind of similar to my death at a review, but um, this is not the review for everyone. So that's, that's fine too. Let's, let's try to re-record this in like a five minute. So for that guy who commented and said, I need to make scripts so I can stay on topic. You're right, man. I, it's hard. It's hard to stay on topic and not ramble, but I'll nail the next recording on the second try guaranteed not guaranteed but that will be the one that goes up on the main channel this is the one who goes up on the side channel or the second channel brad size two my first takes and less scripted not even going to edit it no music or anything but if you do have the extra time here's where it is um i also have a couple other things in the mail a couple of reviews coming down the pipeline a couple of things i want to talk about on this channel too i want to talk about some monitor differences and stuff like that and uh, some other stuff. I'll, I'll be I'll be posting some stuff more frequently now. I think I'm in a good spot. So yeah, that's it. Um, if you want to help me out, you can go subscribe to any of the channels listed down below, and comment what mouse you want to see reviewed in the uh, in the future, or keyboards, or like any type of gear, like anything that you know goes along with gaming. So that's about it. I'm gonna cut this recording and go try again.